Welcome to Orlando Attractions Magazine, the show. This week we're thinking big in Epcot's interventions. And swords will be swallowed at Ripley's, believe it or not. As always, we've got the latest theme park news, travel tips, a new giveaway, and more coming at you. So let's get it started in here. Think. Filmed among the aisles of the happiest store in Florida, the show comes to you from Theme Park Connection, where you can buy, sell, and trade Disney items. Visit the warehouse here in Winter Garden or online at themeparkconnection.com. This week's show is also brought to you by Mouse Fan Travel, specializing in vacation planning by land and sea. Whether headed to the theme parks, destined for a luxurious cruise, or seeking an exotic destination elsewhere in the world, let the experts handle it at no extra cost. Visit mousefantravel.com. Welcome to this week's episode of the show. I'm Banks. And I'm Jenny Lynn. Banks. Yes. This past week, my life ended. What? What are you talking I about? I know, it sounds drastic, but something really drastic happened. Again, again he asks, <laughs> what? Damon Pampolina accepted my friend request on Facebook. Ah. And when that happened, I stopped breathing. Well, you look like you're not only alive, but in good health. Well, it's just a figment of your imagination. I'm actually a ghost. No, but seriously, this thing is definitely messing with my head in an unexpected way. So I don't dream very much. I'm not one of these people that dreams very often. Okay. But I, I had a dream this week that I was looking through things here at Theme Park Connection, okay. you know, the items and everything. Yeah, and then yeah. I walked into that back room near the warehouse area. It yeah. turned into a living room. And the members of the Mouseketeer, you know, rock band, the party, they were all in there sitting on a couch. Uh -huh. So Damon, Chase, Dee Dee, Tiffany, and Albert, they were all there watching old uh, video footage of their concerts. And then Damon asked me to come and watch the videos with them. I know it's really, I, something's very wrong with me. Okay. I'm too yeah. old to be having these little teenager dreams. Yeah, sounds like you, you have a fever, okay? And I think the only cure is a full more cowbell. <laughs> nice. I like your Saturday Night Live mm -hmm. tribute right there. Yeah. Can you please dance around with the cowbell? It definitely will cure the situation. Well, if, if, if I can find a cowbell, but you, you never know what kind of crazy <laughs> might happen when you hang out with the bankster, right? <laughs> but first, let's take care of business with the news in the queue. Disney Parks blog revealed a first look at the new interactive features coming to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad's queue at the Magic Kingdom. The new interactive queue will take guests on the backstory of the mining company, including a look at the mining office, explosives magazine room, and the ventilation room. The mining office will give a view of the miner schedules. The magazine room allows guests to set off explosives oh. in the attraction itself. Wow. And the ventilation room gives us a peek at the miners working deep down in the mines. Now, no official opening date has been announced yet, but parts of it have already opened, and it looks... I love these interactive cues. I do, too. I'm a big fan of interactive cues. If you got to spend the time waiting in the line, you might as well be entertained while you're there, Especially, right? especially Big Thunder Mountain, because the, their queue is open air. Like, there's really no a lot of air conditioning. So mm -hmm. I know waiting in the queue in the past, especially in the summer, it's miserable because you're just sweating there in the line. There's no air blowing. But you got something like this to kind of t distract you from from the uh, humidity or from the heat or from waiting in line and you get to have fun. And Agreed. And how exciting is it that you're going to be able to set off explosives right? in the ride? Right. I mean, <laughs> if you've seen the uh, pictures. They've added these props along the mountain itself, like especially along the track after the um, the third lift hill when you're going out and out toward the um, rivers of America. You see these boxes where the explosives are and you hit it and water will shoot up. Apparently. If you're on the train, you're probably going to get very soaked. So this is going to be the equivalent of those water guns on Collie River Rapids. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to all the stuff they have for the ventilation room as well because they shot a lot of footage of, for, of actors and mines. So that's going to be really fun to see 
see their reactions to what they're working on in the mine. So creative. Oh, I yeah. love the work of the engineers. Yes, yeah, so now we've given you the details on Big Thunder Mountain, and now get ready for some new details on Angry Birds Space Encounter at the Candy Space Center Visitor Complex. The journey starts by entering the Angry Birds wormhole mm -hmm. and gives guests a chance to create their own Angry Bird via computer screen, solve an Angry Birds sliding puzzle, play a slingshot target game, Good. I believe you had That's mentioned that before, mm -hmm. and weave their way through the Danger Zone mirror maze, to mm -hmm. name a few things. The new exhibit is scheduled to open this March and will be included in regular admission to the visitor complex. I love Angry Birds, so, and I was really, I'm really happy there's actually gonna be a slingshot target game. That part does sound quite fun, actually. Oh yeah, have you ever played any of the Angry Birds games? No, I haven't. My kids are Angry Birds fans. Mm -hmm. I just never went there. I can't, I can't afford to be sucked in to a new addiction. I'm, my time is already like <laughs> sucked in by all my other addictions. <laughs> but I do have tickets to the Kennedy Space Center and I'm thinking I there might want to hold off a little bit longer until this thing opens up. It's perfect. My kids will love this. Oh, I'm sure they will. Well, moving on from birds to boy bands, this week's Limited Time Magic gives Main Street's favorite boy band, the Dapper Dans, an update. Now through Sunday, the Dapper Dans will be singing a medley of popular boy band tunes at the Magic Kingdom. Now we got a preview of this back in December during the New Fantasyland Media events. Yes, um, And it's the exact did. same um, routine they did at that event, and it's, it's fun. It's very, it's very entertaining, yeah. yes. I mean, I got quite a few laughs mm -hmm. out of it. I, I'll admit, when, I, when they first announced this idea of the boy band, uh, of them singing, little, I was like, really, you're gonna have the Dapper Dan singing kinky. boy bands? That's, that's not, that really fits, it, but. I know, it sounds, it sounds, <laughs> Dumb. When it you, sounds dumb. But when you hear it, it's <laughs> funny. And they it and is. the thing is they don't change their entire set. They still have their regular sets that they always do. They just add this at the end of it. Oh, okay. So it doesn't affect their normal day-to-day -day routine. It's just for a limited time, they're going to end it with a little medley of boy band hits. Well, and it is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we have seen it. It's worth watching. Oh, yeah. You definitely get a few chuckles out of it. Somehow it works. Yeah. They are, <laughs> they are the original boy band. They and, are. <laughs> yes. Now, the Dans are not the only ones changing with the times. Over at Universal Studios, construction is underway to expand and improve the Simpsons territory. More of the fictional town of Springfield is coming to the area as Moe's Tavern and most likely my favorite, Krusty Burger, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Gulp and Blow. They're being constructed in the former International Food and Film Festival food court area. Now, there's no official announcement about when the new areas will have be opening, but the markings on one of the buildings is unmistakable as Moe's to fans of Simpsons TV show and even, even now, there's the the building starting to look like the gulp and blow more and more and I'm excited for this. I mean expand that whole section over there and add more iconic locations from the Simpsons. We're really yeah. fans really love that. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. And to have that be all three locations um, are places that you could get something to eat or drink. So that to have that be the entrance to the the new food area at the Simpsons is right. perfect. Makes you feel a little bit more like you've actually walked into the cartoon rather exactly. than just you're visiting an attraction. I'd be interested in seeing if they're going to have any sort of like specialty food items or special drinks that like would be Simpsons. Burger? Exactly. <laughs> Well, the Simpsons might be moving in, but Mickey and Minnie are moving on up this spring. Mm -hmm. Mickey and Minnie can look forward to air conditioning in a new Animal Kingdom meet and greet location just for them. The new Adventurer's Outpost will replace the Beastly Bazaar store on Discovery Island. Now, Camp Minnie Mickey will still feature other Disney characters such as Chippendale, Baloo, King Louie, and Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. Winnie the Pooh and Tigger are going to be moving from their boat dock location on Discovery Island over to Camp Minnie Mickey, and I believe I heard that uh, Donald and Daisy are going to take over at the boat dock. Lots of changes going on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great because, you know, I think Mickey and Minnie should be indoors. You need a little air conditioning and Animal Kingdom is the hottest Do you feel like Mickey and Minnie are more entitled to air conditioning than <laughs> Donald and Daisy? Well, they're, they're, this is getting controversial uh, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, Animal Kingdom is the hottest park. Yes. Because of all of the foliage. Uh, foliage. Yeah, uh, fo no, that's yeah, the right word. Yeah, yeah. I'll just make sure I say it. <laughs> Going with the it. The humidity, it just, it makes, because sometimes they make it unbearable in the summer, so it'd be nice to have to have some meet and greets indoors, so this would be a welcome addition. Yes. And plus, you know, this might be the first little thing for Avatar. Oh. Who knows? This might be the first change we're seeing for Look Avatar. Look at you, the gears turning on up in there. They rarely turn. Uh, well, that may give us a chance to speak with Mickey and Minnie, but the Orange County Regional History Center is giving us a chance to speak with some of the people behind the design of locations like the Adventures Outpost, the theme park designers themselves. 
the fourth annual Entertainment Designer Forum will take place March 8th, 2013 at the History Center. Now it will feature some of the top creative minds behind Central Florida's theme parks giving talks, talking to fans, and auctioning off rare theme park memorabilia for charity. All proceeds from the event will go to the American Cancer Society Relay for Life. I've, I've never gotten to go to one of these in the past before. I'm, I'm gonna try and go this year. Um, the, the, the speakers are uh, industry professionals and are very, they, they, how do, how do you, how do I say? They are great speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, I love all of them. I'm, I'm friends with several of them on there and you know, they're always fun to talk to and they always have something great to say. I have a question for you that yes. you may not be able to answer. Mm -hmm. What do you think the age range for the audience should be? Is this something that might appeal to a I would, I like would, elementary or middle school child that's interested in becoming an no, Imagineer? I don't think so. This is um, more an adult I would say it's thing. more of a, a, a adult college and up because I mean, they're probably gonna be, you know, spilling some secrets on ways things are done. So, you know, it might, you know, a peek behind the curtain the kids may not want to see yet. Okay. They may not want to kind of preserve that magic, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. So I, w I would say, you know, more high school and up who are interested in getting into this type of profession, it'd be more for them. Very, very cool. Well, we can all look forward to that coming soon. We'll also be able to look forward to the following concerts coming up this week. Mm -hmm. If you eat at Mama Melrose's Ristorante Italiano at Disney's Hollywood Studios, look for this hidden Mickey. To the right of the check-in podium as you face it, a green classic Mickey leaf is about one and a half feet above the bottom of the window along the left edge. Look for it. At the risk of sounding like everyone's second grade teacher, it's time for everyone to put those thinking caps on. Indeed. Innoventions and Epcot reworked their IBM exhibit recently. Welcome Think, an experience that aims to educate guests on ways to use technology to improve their lifestyle. Nicole was at the grand opening last week, so let's see what it's all about. Hi there, Nicole here. We're at Epcot today, and behind me is Innoventions West, where we're here for the grand opening of the IBM Think exhibit. Let's go inside and see. This is a lot of fun, actually, and it's been great watching uh, folks of all ages come through the exhibit. There's an interactive uh, gesture wall as you enter the exhibit. You come in and you see a, uh, a very immersive, very engaging widescreen film that was shot around the world. Uh, that addresses topics like advances in medicine, space exploration, more sustainable food products. Uh, and then you come into this space and as you can see, uh, folks are able to interact with large seven foot high touch screens. And these touch screens allow them to move around and do a deep dive and explore topics like tools of seeing over decades. Uh, what those tools of seeing have allowed us to be able to map and visualize, what that helps us understand, which creates advocacy uh, and evangelism, uh, and the belief that we can actually do things that really will change the world. They can download the Exhibit and Think app. Uh, onto their iPads or their Android devices so they have the opportunity to continue this experience and share it with their friends. We've been working with uh, the New York Hall of Science and have developed lesson plans that teachers are able to use in conjunction with that app and as you he heard earlier today the teachers are, are quite inspired by that and as we've seen the students are quite inspired by it so we think that's wonderful. It's a great way of turning this into a real teaching tool. Well I was here for a teacher workshop uh, last month and I was able to kind of see it as a student and I thought it was really cool to interact with the process that way so I brought it back to my students and we've been using it in my GEMS, the Girls in Engineering Math and Science Club and in my astronomy classes as well. So how, do, like what kind of curriculum is it and how are they then using it in the classroom and stuff? Well the, the lesson plans that are in Teachers Try Science um, 
go through the five steps, the seeing, mapping, understanding, believing, acting, and it lets you really use that process with just about anything. So they can be tailored for any kind of science that you teach. So I'm using it next, we're starting um, electromagnetic spectrum in astronomy, so I'm going to use it with that and go through that process that way. So. That's a little bit of what you can see here at the new exhibit at Interventions West at Epcot, brought to you by IBM. So next time you're here, think about stopping by. The next time you plan a Disney vacation, book with a travel agency that's been specifically designated as an authorized Disney vacation planner. Unlike some other agencies, many of our agents' exclusive knowledge of Walt Disney World can help you get the most out of your vacation. And the assistance of our travel professionals can help you get a customized Disney vacation that's just right for you, your family, and your budget. Start planning your magical vacation today by visiting mousefantravel.com. Now, World Sword Swallowers Day was this past Saturday. I don't know if you knew that or not. You don't have it marked on your calendar? <laughs> not that one in particular, no. no. I swear we have some of the strangest holidays in this country. Well, strange is correct, which is why Ripley's Believe It or Not hosted a celebration honoring the day. Our reporter Patrick went out and covered it for us and for you. Here's how it played out. Bit of a warning, though. It is going to contain some graphic images. I mean, sword swallowing and a lot of other things, so... If you have a weak stomach or, or kids may not want to see this, I'd look away. Tell me when it's over. You baby. I am here at Ripley's Believe It or Not in Orlando on I Drive for World Sword Swallowers Day. Now this is February 23rd where over 20 plus sword swallowers will be at Ripley's Believe It or Not worldwide and they will be swallowing swords at exactly 223. So let's go check out the action and see if you have the stomach for this event. And how it works around here <laughs> is if some dude is in front of you and he says, hey y'all, y'all want to check this out? <laughs> Not only do you say yes, but you look at him and you convince him it's the greatest idea you have ever heard in your life. And then you get out your cell phone and you start recording. Because you see it's those stunts gone wrong things. They get a lot of hits on YouTube. You get paid for those things. So. start sword swallowing if one were to don't try it at home but how would you start sword swallowing well obviously <laughs> most people are smarter than us and they wouldn't <laughs> want to even try that but I was different from a small child I've always been different I've always been unusual and I've always pushed my limits and it's exactly like you think you start taking a sword and forcing it down your body and um, I got injured among many other people who have in the process and uh, so it is very very dangerous that we do and most sword swallowers are self-taught being that it is so dangerous that most people uh, you know they give up before they accomplish it or they're smart enough never to try it from the beginning. True. And on a different side of the spectrum you swallow balloons which I've never heard of before. How does that come to be? Um, well he actually attempted to teach me how to sword swallow and um, I got a sword down one time and realized that was definitely <laughs> his stunt. Um, it's very much mind over matter. I don't have a mind, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. Yeah. Um, but knowing that I had that ability, um, I kind of just went on a, a quest to find out what it was I could swallow, and uh, balloons were the winner. Now, I know World Sword Swallow Day is centered around uh, specific cancer. Can you tell me more about that? Well, it has a lot to do with esophageal cancer, but also swallowing disorders. And then, of course, it's to pay homage to the people who've paved the path to us and showing the contributions that uh, sideshow performers, uh, specifically sword swallowers, have actually made to the medical industry and in creating a lot of medical equipment from uh, the endoscope and uh, other devices and so we're basically out here just uh, 
bringing awareness to people and letting them know that Sideshow is real and it's a viable form of entertainment and it's still alive and well. One, two, three, four, five. Ladies and gentlemen, right here, Ripley's, believe it or not, shattering world records. That's what we do here with these guys, man. All right, guys, again, do not try this at home. But if you guys do want to see some more unusual, different things, come on down to Ripley's here on iDrive. It's open every day, and you can even check out things like this girl here. <laughs> Room requests. It's a make or break deal in some cases, so you really want to make sure that it's done right. This week's travel tip can help make sure that no mistakes are made when it comes to your room. If you've been to a resort previously and had a great experience, it's tempting to ask for that specific room again. After all, you can't improve on perfect, right? But making your request this way can sometimes work against you. Rather than request a room by number, tell the reservationist the reason why you want that room. Does it overlook the lake? Is it because it's on the fourth floor? Maybe it's because it's a corner room or close to the elevator. Whatever the reason, make sure your request is made with these explanations rather than the specific room number. That way, if the particular room you requested is unavailable, the reservationist may still be able to find another room that meets the request. And if you're working with a travel agent such as Mouse Fan Travel, be sure to let them know so that they can make the request for you. And we are back for our weekly giveaway. Now last week we asked you to tell us how you viewed our show, whether it was by YouTube, Bright House Cable, or iTunes. Thank you to everyone who gave us a response. Most of you who responded watched the show through YouTube, mm -hmm. but we had a variety of answers, including one viewer who watches us on his Zoom. Wow, those things are still around? <laughs> Apparently so. Your feedback is always helpful as we seek to improve the show. Thank you again for taking the time to respond. Our winner, who was chosen at random, is... Justin McDonald from Jacksonville, Florida. Now, Justin said, I watched the show through your iTunes podcast. I discovered your show on YouTube a while ago when trying to explain the Orlando area attractions to my wife, who was Russian, and had never really been exposed to them before. Became a loyal subscriber of the podcast ever since and enjoy it every week. Thank you so much, Justin. And congratulations. We'll be sending you those Legoland Florida tickets shortly. Now, for this week's challenge, we want you to tell us the name of your favorite theme park that isn't in Florida. If you haven't been to any others, just tell us which theme park outside of Florida you'd most like to visit. Personally, my favorite theme park was... Uh, it's the park I grew up at. It's the first theme park I ever went to as a kid. It's called Magic Springs. It's in Hot Springs, Arkansas. That's where I rode my very first roller coaster. Uh, it's, it's pretty much how one of the places I fell in love with theme parks. So that's that's one of my favorites. It's back home in Arkansas. My favorite would be Six Flags Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, Six Flags Over Georgia. Oh yeah, thrill rides galore. Heck oh definitely. Yeah. Six Flags are always good. I always went to Six Flags Over Texas and, and Dallas. Now when you send in your answer, you might be picked to receive this great prize right here. Would you, uh, would you like to hold that up for yes. the audience? This is a grand opening t-shirt from Rock and Roller Coaster back in the date says here was July 29th, 1999. Now back when it was still called the Disney MGM Studios. This is legit. This is very legit. Size is XL. It's awesome. We'll make an awesome addition to your t-shirt collection. We're going to need you to send your answer by email to info at attractionsmagazine.com. You must include your full name and full address. We need it all by the end of next Monday, March 4th, 2013. As always, keep in mind you can only enter once per week and you can only win mm. once per year. Hey, she got it. <laughs> now, every week I'll let us know that you're out there watching us and we want you to know that we're right here listening to you. Our first shout out this week goes to Daniel Gomez. Daniel submitted some great questions that he'd like to see in a character chat with Franklin the Turtle at SeaWorld. Hey, thanks, Daniel. We're not sure when we'll have a chance to talk to Franklin again, but we'll keep those in mind. Next, we're sending our very best wishes for a happy anniversary out to Demay Graber and his wife, Kathy. March 6 marks 20 years of wedded bliss, oh, and congrats. we couldn't be more excited about that. Hey, guys, we're thrilled you're headed our way soon, and that way we can be a part of your weekly routine in, the, in between the trips. Yes. We're totally thrilled about that. Yes. Now, uh, Carolyn Piazza, I believe, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Piazza or Piazza, um, is next up. 
we heard from Caroline on Twitter this week. She loves the show and we love her. Thank you so and much. And finally, we're shouting out to Derek Hoffman. Derek was inducted into the Disney Parks Moms panel this year and oh. took note when his fellow panelist Jackie was mentioned a few weeks ago. Fear not, Derek, you were not overlooked. I personally am grateful for the way your Disney expertise has enhanced my life and congratulations on making it to the top. Well done, sir. Yes, we salute you. Special thanks to Mouse Fan Travel. Let them exercise their expertise and plan your next trip, whether by land or sea. For a free quote without obligation, visit mousefantravel.com. And much thanks to Theme Park Connection, where you can buy, sell, and trade theme park items. Visit the warehouse here in Winter Garden or online at themeparkconnection.com. When you do, make sure to let them know that we sent you. Also, don't forget that you can watch the show each and every week on YouTube, iTunes and Bright House Cable. That's channel 300 in Central Florida and 340 in the Tampa area. You can also like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash attractions magazine. And we hope you'll follow us on Twitter too, at attractions. Jenny Lynn and I, we love hearing from you guys. So we hope that you'll will Facebook and tweet to us regularly. We also like doing hand motions apparently. Yeah, Facebook slash, liking, like, slash, slash. Uh, it's, it's all great. Yeah, yeah. We've got some good stuff Twitter, going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be forgotten, you can visit attractionsmagazine.com for news and videos throughout the week and subscribe to the magazine itself. It's available in print, on the Nook, online, and in our iPhone and iPad apps. You can also pick up most of our back issues and save on shipping right here at Theme Park Connection. Hand signals right here. Right here. Right. And for everyone who just can't get enough of Orlando Attractions Magazine, we now have t-shirts, mugs, bags, and a few other things available for purchase online. Simply head to Zazzle.com slash attractions to get your very own Attractions Magazine items. Sadly, Banks, Bankster, we have come to the end. I've got to get used <laughs> to this nickname, aren't I? <laughs> well, look, all good things must come to an end. I thought it was that good things come to those who wait. Right. Well, that works too, because we're coming back next week. Yeah. But until then, everyone, make sure you get out there and have, have fun. fun. You're off? starting. Oh. <laughs> Including a look at the mining office, explosive, explosive, <laughs> explosives. <laughs> the new, oh my gosh. Are you okay? What's yeah, going on? I don't know. <gasps> the uh, new you know, interactive you, queue. Yeah, it's visit mousefantravel.com. And much parked at the. <laughs> <laughs> this week's travel tip can make. Oops, sorry, that was my bad. <clears throat> Think at. Epcot. Okay, one more time. February 23rd, which is World Sword Swallower. Ah. So once again, guys, do not try this at home. It is something you don't want to be mistaken for, I guess. Let's, as they say, don't try this at home. So I'm just going to try it at Ripley's because I'm not at home. <laughs> oh, this is harder than it was. <laughs> <laughs>